What's up smart homers? My name's Aaron. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily set up mailbox notifications in Home Assistant. Press start. Every day when I get home from work, I check the mailbox to see if we got mail. I never know if we just didn't get any that day or if someone already picked it up. The plan for this project is to put a contact sensor on my mailbox so that I'll be notified when mail arrives. For this project, I used a Zeus ZSE40 contact sensor with waterproof case and an AOTEC Z-Wave repeater. Besides that, I used a few other household items. Because of the distance of my mailbox from my Home Assistant hub, I was really limited on what sensor I could use. This distance, almost 80 feet, forced me to look for a contact sensor that could reach all the way out to my mailbox. This eliminated a lot of the different sensors I was looking at and left me with either a wired sensor, a Wi-Fi sensor, or a Z-Wave sensor. I tried to avoid Wi-Fi sensors at all costs because my Wi-Fi network is really overloaded right now and I really didn't want to do wired so I settled on a Z-Wave sensor. The problem then was the price of the sensor. Most of the Z-Wave sensors that I was seeing on Amazon were $35 or more. And that's for a sensor that you're gonna leave in your mailbox, which is right by the road where anyone could take it or damage it. However, Zoos recently released a new contact sensor, which they were selling at the time for a stunningly low price of $18. And for a couple of dollars more, you could get a waterproof case. This is the contact sensor that I decided to use for this project. Once the sensor arrived, I easily paired it with Home Assistant via Z-Wave JS, just following the instructions that came with the sensor. I decided to test the range of my Z-Wave network by holding the sensor in my hand and walking out the front door and across the front yard. I only got about halfway out to the road when I lost connection and I was apparently out of range. The signal had to come from my Z-Wave stick through the wall of my office and then through a metal front door and out to the mailbox. Apparently that was just too far and the wall and the door were inhibiting the signal. To try and extend the range of my network, I installed a Zoos Z-Wave light switch right inside my front door. Once I installed that switch, I healed my Z-Wave network so that all of my devices would find the fastest route back to the Z-Wave hub. This did extend the range of my Z-Wave network a little, but it wasn't enough still to reach my mailbox. I realized that since the front door is made of metal and the front of my house has brick on it, that was probably just attenuating the signal way too much for it to reach the mailbox. Next, I decided to try a Zoos smart plug that I bought a long time ago as a repeater, but I would plug it into an outdoor plug on the front of my house. Again, I healed the Z-Wave network and this time I had signal all the way out to the mailbox. This proved that the metal door and the brick on the wall was probably what was inhibiting my Z-Wave network from reaching the road and that just having a repeater plugged into the outside of my house should extend my network as far as it needed to go. I then ordered an AOTech Z-Wave repeater to use instead of that smart plug. Distance problem solved. Next, I did some planning as to where I would mount the sensor on the mailbox. After testing how it would look on a cardboard box, I proceeded to install the sensor on the inside of my mailbox. Unfortunately, as soon as I put the sensor inside the mailbox, it stopped communicating with my Z-Wave network. Next, I tried mounting the sensor underneath the mailbox, no signal. Tried mounting it on the side of the mailbox, still no signal. After trying all different locations on the mailbox, trying to find the best spot, I ended up having to mount it on the actual door of the mailbox, the plastic door of the mailbox. Only then would it actually communicate with my Z-Wave hub. To me, it was evident that having the sensor inside or directly mounted to a big metal box was messing with the Z-Wave communication. So you have the large piece and the small piece of the sensor. Mounting the large piece of the sensor to the door of the mailbox gave me a new problem because it left a gap between the side of the mailbox and the sensor. Since the small piece is just a magnet, I decided to put a couple fridge magnets stuck back to back onto the mailbox in between the large piece of the sensor and the mailbox itself. 
With this configuration, the sensor worked reliably every time I opened and closed the mailbox, immediately registering the action in Home Assistant. Though this is not as aesthetically appealing as if I was able to mount the sensor directly to the side of the mailbox, it still doesn't look too obtrusive or obvious and I think it'll do okay. And really it's more about functionality than about aesthetics at this point. I may do some modifications in the future to make the sensor more secure. And I'm actually thinking about 3D printing a little mount or spacer to space the sensor off the mailbox. And that way I could configure this better. But for now it's gonna have to work. This whole setup did survive Hurricane Henry that kind of touched us a little bit here in Pennsylvania. So that waterproof case and that adhesive works very well. Okay, so now in Home Assistant, it's time to set it up. The first thing I did was create a Boolean entity called Mail Present to indicate whether or not there's mail in the mailbox. An input Boolean in Home Assistant is a toggle entity that you can create to help you with automations that's either on or off. If it was on, that would mean there is mail in the mailbox. If it's off, there's no mail. I also created an input date time entity called mail arrived in Home Assistant. This can be used in automations to save the time that you, the mail arrives. All right, after creating these, it's time to automate. I created two automations. The first automation is triggered when the mailbox sensor opens. First, it turns on the input Boolean that I created, indicating that mail is present. Next, it sets the input date time variable that we created to the time that the mailbox was opened. Next, it sends a notification to my phone and my wife's phone that mail has arrived. And lastly, it plays an audio notification over two different Google Home speakers in our house that mail has arrived. You've got mail. I also set conditions for this automation because I don't want this automation running if there's already mail in the mailbox. I added a condition that required the mail present input Boolean that I created to be off for this automation to run. This way it only runs if it hasn't already run that day. So next there needs to be a way to turn off the mail present input Boolean or to clear the notification so to speak so that the automation can be run the next day. To do this I created a quick little automation that sets the input Boolean to off every day at midnight. So the next part is actually my favorite part of this project. I created a notification or a card of sorts on my Home Assistant dashboard that's mounted to my wall in my kitchen that shows me that mail has arrived and the time it's arrived. This way, a quick glance at my dashboard, I can see if mail came or not, if I didn't hear the notification already. To do this, I first created a template sensor for the time that the mail arrived using the input date time variable that is set in the automation. I use this template sensor so that I can format the time a little bit better because I really don't care about the date that automatically gets saved in the automation and I really just want the time that the mail arrived. Next, I created a custom button card in Home Assistant that shows me if mail has arrived or not. I'm actually able to change the icon that's on the card based on if mail is there or not. I can also change the icon color. And if mail is there, I display the time. If mail has not arrived, then it says no mail underneath the icon. I also gave that button a tap action. So tapping that custom button card turns off the input Boolean saying there's no mail. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I have to say that once I got this sensor in range of my Home Assistant Z-Wave network, it was extremely reliable and I would highly recommend this sensor. I haven't had it long enough to test the battery life, but so far it's been pretty good and that waterproof case lasting in that wind and that rain is amazing. The biggest thing I learned in this project is the ability of metal to really attenuate Z-Wave signal and really shorten your Z-Wave range. I can't believe that a metal mailbox or a metal door can inhibit the signal that much, but it's something to keep in mind if you're planning on putting a sensor outside or a long distance from your hub, is that metal is a problem. Not only that, but brick. Even though Z-Wave is supposed to have a much longer range than Zigbee, the construction materials of your house are important and you wanna keep those in mind when you're trying to set up a sensor that's far away. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please subscribe, you know, hit the like button and hit the bell if you want to be notified when new videos are uploaded. I'm going to be doing more guides like this as well as product reviews and some home automation idea videos. I'd be very interested if there's anything I can do to improve my automations or this setup. So please leave a comment if you have any ideas or suggestions or if there's anything I missed. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you.